Knowing what I know now, if I had to start my handbag collection over again, would I still choose to buy luxury handbags? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I recently went through a little bit of a mindset shift. I wanna say this started about mid 2023, but by the end of 2023, even I would say more towards August type of timeline, I knew for certain that I wanted to change my bad habits in 2024. So because my mindset was already shifting in 2023, I feel like now, early beginning 2024, it has really, really already shifted drastically. So knowing what I know now, after purchasing all these beautiful luxury bags, knowing how much I spend on them, knowing how much they resell for, knowing that they don't always work out for me. Actually, I'd say about only 50% of the time do I make a good choice, which is horrible in itself. Would I still purchase luxury bags if I were starting all over again? The answer to that question isn't necessarily black and white. It's yes and no. So would I still purchase luxury bags knowing what I know now? I have to say that I actually enjoy buying contemporary designer bags. They have so many beautiful, beautiful styles from different companies such as Lee Tanner, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, it's not an American brand, Pauline, um, Coach, just so many beautiful brands that make high-end luxury bags for around the $500 price point. But I also really enjoy my luxury bags. When it comes to my luxury purchases, I would definitely be more mindful. I find that my low luxury bags are actually the bags that I enjoy the most. What does low luxury mean to me? Low luxury for me is under the $2,500 price point. So bags like my Speedy B25, which is under $2,000, my Croset, which is under $2,000, my YSL College bag, which is just over $2,500 now, but when I purchased it, it was right around the $2,000 price point. And then also you can buy bags pre loved many, many different brands, many, many different styles for under $2,500. So if I were starting my collection all over again, I have a good feeling that it would be split, low lux and contemporary designer bags. I wanna to quickly touch on some of the brands that I would definitely look into if I were starting my collection all over again. Now this could be that I lost all of my collection, maybe I sold all of my collection, maybe I just want a fresh start, who knows why I don't have all these beautiful bags behind me, but if I were to start my collection all over again, there are a few standout brands that I feel like I would purchase from first. The first brand that I wanna start out with is Mulberry. Now, I don't own anything from Mulberry, but I have been on the YouTube search down the rabbit hole for mulberry because they have beautiful stunning bags most of them are under the one thousand five hundred dollar price point you're getting all leather bags beautiful construction beautiful designs for under one thousand five hundred dollars which for me personally you really can't beat that it's luxury it's the materials are luxurious the design is luxurious they're just standout pieces and the fact that you can get them for so inexpensive really has just blown my mind there are a few bags from gucci celine and ysl that are all under the 2500 dollars price point so that's another area that i might start out in but also louis vuitton as i mentioned my louis vuitton corset my speedy the noe bbs the noe petite noe the classic noe all of those bags are under $2,000 at Louis Vuitton. So there's quite a wide range of low luxe bags that I could dig into if I were starting my collection all over again. There are a number of contemporary designer bags that I am really, really interested in as well. So if I were starting my collection all over again, I have a pretty good feeling that I might do a low luxe bag, a contemporary designer bag, a low luxe bag, a contemporary designer bag, because it really is split 50-50. You guys, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this brand before. I'm gonna pop up photos of some of my favorite styles from this brand. It's Lee Tanner, and I am pronouncing that wrong because it's not in English. It's L-E space T-A-N-N-E-U-R. 
They have beautiful full leather bags and almost all of them are under the $800 price point. Most of them are in the $500 price point. You guys, I am so excited about this brand. Expect to see one of the bags that I'm sharing with you guys in my collection one day because I cannot wait to get my hands on it and report back to you guys and let you know about the que the le the weather the leather quality because they look absolutely stunning and high end in my opinion. I've also been really interested in Songmont. They have the drippy roof bag. They have hobo style bags. They have slouchy bags, but they also have bags that are a little bit more structured. I am really, really blown away by this brand. They have very affordable price points. Almost all of their bags are under the $500 price point and they just look so cool, so unique. They have designs like nobody else. The drippy roof bag in specific is my personal favorite because it looks like the um, Loewe puzzle bag, you guys, at a much more affordable price. So that's another one that's been on and off of my wish list just because I'm really trying to limit what I'm bringing into my collection. So that's why I haven't purchased it yet, but you guys, it's been on my radar for quite a while. Now for a couple brands that you guys know that I love, Pollen is one of those brands where I think they have really fun, cool designs for a wonderful price point. I'm not as blown away by Pollen recently as I have been by Coach. You guys, they probably have five or six Coach bags that I am absolutely drooling over right now. And with me being in my low buy year, I am struggling hardcore not to purchase another bag right now. So let's do a quick little recap. What would I do if I were starting over my entire collection? First of all, I would give myself a cap. I would not purchase anything over $2,500. If I was absolutely in love with something that cost over $2,500, I would just wait until it drops below the $2,500 on the pre-loved market. Now this is a new mindset of mine because old Melissa, if she loved it, she saved up, she bought it and that's totally okay. But new Melissa is trying to be very, very disciplined with her finances. I have some big, big goals coming up, especially around buying a new home or renovating our home and just doing some just really expensive, big home things. So I don't want to get into that too much, but that is one of the main reasons why my mind has shifted. I still love bags, but I need to be more strict with my bag budget. I also think that if I were starting my entire collection over again, I would probably have split. I think I would have half of my collection be more of the low luxe brands or not browns, low luxe bags. And I feel like I would have half of my collection be contemporary de designers. I went through a phase where I didn't want anything contemporary designer brands. I just felt like I wasn't using them. I wasn't gravitating towards them. That has completely changed you guys. They have come out with some really, really cool styles. And I reach for my coach tabby, which is, you guys might not be able to see it. It's up there in the corner. I reach for that bag so, so much and I absolutely love it. I can't wait, you guys. I really, really want the so black version with the black hardware and the black, everything's black on it. The soft tab tabby, whoo, get my words right. The coach soft tabby in so black. All of you guys have been recommending the soft tabby to me and I didn't find one that I loved until I saw that one. You guys, it is so, 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 so good. This video was meant to be a what if situation. What if I didn't have a collection? What if my collection disappeared? What if I was starting over? But as I was kind of doing my bullet points for this video, I really started to think about it and I want to actually incorporate these into my luxury slash contemporary designer handbag collection moving forward. Now I'm still planning on buying luxury bags and I'm still planning on buying contemporary bags. But as I've mentioned, I have some pretty big goals that I'm super, super excited about you guys. And with that being said, I need to scale back on my luxury and contemporary designer bag shopping. So with that, of course, I'm only buying my three bags this year, but I also want to incorporate these what if rules, the, t the staying underneath $2,500 into my life going forward. As I mentioned, I have some big goals coming up. So that is one of the reasons why I want to incorporate this budget for myself. 
but there's actually quite a few other reasons that I want to share with you guys. The first one is I actually feel guilty when I spend over $2,500 on a bag. Let me know if you guys are the same, if there is a certain price point where you start to feel guilty. Now, this is specifically for me because I'm a mom and for some reason us moms have a hard time spending a big chunk of money on ourselves. Now if I were to spend that on my kids or like for example I redid my daughter's bedroom last year I didn't feel any guilt at all. I was super excited about it. It was really fun um, but when it comes to spoiling myself anything over $2,500 really really makes me feel that mom guilt and I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. The third reason is I am the type of person that holds on to something for two or three years and then I move on from it. And unfortunately, especially with the brands that I love like Bottega Veneta, if I buy them brand new in the store, I can expect to lose about 60 to 70% of what I purchased the bag for, which is just astronomical. So moving forward, especially when it comes to Bottega Veneta, I'm only buying it pre-loved because you can buy a beautiful, brand new, excellent condition Bottega Veneta bag on the resale market. As long as it's not a Jody, for some reason, those resell pretty good. But you can buy one for a fraction of the price, usually under $2,000 and often even under $1,500. Whereas most of my Bottega Veneta bags, I am cringing to say were around the $4,000 price point. And if I were to sell them today, I would probably get around $1,000 for them. The fourth reason is simply budgeting and being more strict and being more reserved with my finances. This is something that I go back and forth on. I was a single mom for a long time. I preached that on my channel and I was really good with money when I was a single mom because I had to be. Then I got married to my husband and of course with two incomes, we didn't have to be either one of us as strict with our budget and we kind of let ourselves have fun for a couple years, which is totally okay and I'm glad that we were able to do that. But now, as I mentioned, we have some big goals that we want to achieve together Together. and so our finances are changing and that is really exciting but also really scary so I want to give myself a budget now I don't know exactly what that budget for the year is going to be this year it's just going to be a total of three bags whatever that may be but in 2025 I would like to set an actual strict budget for shopping that meaning bags clothes shoes etc and go that way rather than limiting my three bags and this year I'm not buying any clothes or any shoes. That is where I'm headed in 2025 and I'm really really excited about it but with all of these changes I cannot tell you guys enough how much my brain has been turning. I feel like it is always hardwired to just overthink every little thing, every purchase, every process but I will jump more into that topic in my first update of how January went on my low buy year and I am so excited to film that video for you guys because I have so many things to share with you.